Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about um, multiplying single digit numbers by multiples of 10. So let's start with an example um, that we looked at a bit in class. Um, here I've got a 2 by 4 array. So this is an array showing 2 times 4 equals 8. Now, I'm going to make some changes to this array. So what is it showing now? It's no longer showing 2 times 4 equals 8, um, because I replaced all of the 1s with 10s. So let's get rid of that. I now have two rows with four 10s in each, instead of four 1s. Um, another way to write that would be to say that it is equal to 2 times 40 because 4 tens is the same thing as 40 and if we count by tens 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 we see that it's 80 like so let's take a look at another example using a different um, method here and be watching to see if you can understand what the pattern is. So I've drawn a 6 times 4 array. Um, there are 6 rows with 4 in each. So this is 6 times 4. Um, I could count them up, but I know that 6 times 4 equals 24. So there are 24 ones here. Now, again, what if they were not ones. What if they were tens? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shift the array from being ones to being tens. So 6 times 4 equals 24. If I move it over here into the tens place, what is it showing now? Well, I still have 6 rows and there are four tens in each. So it's the same as the other one, six times 40. So six times 40, if I counted by tens, I'd see that this is 240. Now, you may have noticed that there's a pattern here. Let's take a closer look at that problem. We said six times four equals 24, and that six times 40 equals 240. Before, we had said that 2 times 4 equals 8 and 2 times 40 equals 80. What we're really doing is we're multiplying using a basic fact, but we're recognizing that it's 10s instead of 1s. That's what we showed here when we switched the 1s into 10s, and here when we shifted the array from 1s to 10s. Um, and let's look at another example of that. 30 times 4. Well, another way that we could write 30 times 4 is 3 tens times 4. And we know that 3 ones times 4, whoops, not 3, 1 x, 3 ones times 4 equals 12, because that's just 3 times 4. So 3 tens times 4 would be 12 tens. And 12 tens is the same as 120. Um, let's do another example. What about 50 times 6? Well, 50 times 6 is 5 tens times 6. Now, 5 tens times 6 is going to be the same as 5 ones times 6, except it's going to be tens, not ones. Um, 5 ones times 6 equals 30. So 5 tens times 6 equals 30 tens. And 30 tens equals 300.
there's there's a shortcut way to do this, um, and I'm going to show you talk about that quick, and then I'm going to go into detail about why it works. Um, so the shortcut, let's let's take one seven times seventy. Let's do that. Um, seven times seventy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the single digit number by the number in the tens place here, and then I'm going to um, shift it one step in the place value chart I'm, by adding a zero. So 7 times 7 equals 49, right? So 7 times 7 D is going to be, because I'm going to basically use that zero and I'm going to shift it in the tens place, 490. And this this will work for any problem where you're multiplying a single digit number by something that you could get to an account by tens, a multiple of ten. So we could count by tens to get to seventy, so this works. Uh, let's do another example. What about six times eighty? Well again, I'm going to multiply six times eight, that's forty-eight. And because it's tens, I'm adding another zero for 480. And let's just look at an interesting property here. 60 times 8. This is going to be pretty much the same. 6 times 8 is 48. But the 10 is coming out of the 60. That's the only difference here. It's coming from here, not there. So, But the outcome is the same. It's still 480. Different numbers going in, but they're related to each other, as you see. Let's look at why this works. So we're going to take that same problem, 60 times 8, and I'm going to break it apart a little bit. And I know that 60 is the same thing as 6 times 10. It's 6 tens. So I'm going to rewrite this as 10 times 6. That's another name for 60. I'm going to put a little arrow to show what I'm doing there. And I'm multiplying that 60 times 8. And multiplication has an interesting property called the associative property. Um, I put this in parentheses because from, to make 60, this is what I'd have to do first, 10 times 6. When I'm doing two multiplication problems in a row, though, the associative property tells me that I can do it in either order. So I'm actually going to shift those parentheses. And I'm going to do it like this. 10 times, and what I'm going to do first is 6 times 8. That's a single digit one. I know how to do that. And 6 times 8 is 48. So I'm left with 10 times 48. Now, 10 times 48, when we multiply by 10, what we're doing is changing ones into tens like we did back here. So I took those, these ones and I shifted them over into the tens place. So each one of those that was a one is now a ten. So back here I have 48 tens when I multiply by ten. Now 48 tens is 480. And um, we could make them all tens and then count them, um, or we could understand that that's a property of multiplying by ten. And if we think about how the place value chart works, so again, imagine we've got ones and tens. If I had, say, let's just make this very simple, two here, and I shift it, I have two tens and now zero ones. Um, and I can expand my chart and look at this very problem. Let's think about it like this. So let's make it a hundreds tens ones chart. And I had 48, I'm going to do that in a different color, uh, 48, and if I shift it into the next spot on the place value chart, let's make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to shift the tens into hundreds and the um, 
ones into tens, I end up with four hundreds, eight tens, and there's z zero ones now. Um, so that gives me 480. So very quickly, um, you might be wondering why did we go through all of these sort of complicated steps right here to show what amounts to just adding a zero like we talked about before. Well, in math it's really important to understand why things work um, because that way you'll be able to take this understanding and use it in different areas um, and also when you learn things that are a little bit different you won't confuse them. Um, so the add a zero rule that we talked about only works this is really important, it only works if the number you're multiplying by is a multiple of ten. Um, that's not going to matter much in third grade but it's going to matter a lot in fourth and fifth. So it still is important to understand why this works the way it does, even if it seems confusing right now. Okay, well, I hope this video was helpful, and uh, this is our last one for this module. Good work.